Yeah, Mike the Beast back, and I'm here with Jerry Ordway. Jerry, how's it going? It's going good. Good. Awesome. My first, uh, I'm like, I'm like superhero unmasked. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been in Cave Comics without my mask since last, whenever, whenever they uh, opened up again, I guess, in May. Yeah. And it, it, it? It's crazy, because the last time we did this, it was still like, the pandemic wasn't, we knew about it, but it wasn't what it turned out to be. It wasn't even a pandemic when we, yet. When was the last time? Was I, it like January or February? It was a March, right? Of Two marches ago, or late February, early March. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 and uh, I think because your uh, uh, Power of Shazam hardcover was delayed because of it, right? I don't think it was because of that. But it was. I but think was, yeah, we I may have made was, a joke, kind of tempting yeah. fate there. Yeah, no, I think a lot of stuff that was. I don't even know where it wound, wound up being printed. I don't think it was printed in China, but I think that was a big change. Is that a lot of stuff that was because China got obviously hit in uh, late. 2019 so by that time i think it was upsetting printing stuff gotcha because they were printing all the heavy duty hardcovers and things gotcha so i think that was a supply chain like one of the first supply chain problems <laughs> <laughs> um so now that's you know things are really like we mentioned restrictions are again lifted cons are happening again so for this uh summer uh do you have any appearances uh you'd like to can you or if Just you can say terrific any? on and um I kind of tentatively agreed. I guess I'm on the list maybe for Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Baltimore's in October again. And uh, I figured that'll be, it'll either be good or bad. I mean, we'll know if there's going to be a resurgence yeah. by fall. Yeah. You know, um, hopefully not. Yeah, because, you, know. you know, hopefully things continue to go on this path and, you know, yeah. closer and closer. Hey, folks, get your vaccine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, though. I mean, again, like, if you're thinking about it in terms of any... Uh, like a comic book threat or whatever, or even like back to some World War II thing or whatever, everybody's got to pull together. That's what it's like, I think, if you really look at it. It's not a political issue. It's kind of like everybody pitch in and we can get back to the world as we knew it. Yeah. You know? um, so during the pandemic, you were you kind of had some projects come out. You had the North Mythology book yeah. and the Old Gaiman book come in, yeah, uh, that, that came out. And that was delayed. That was originally, I think, supposed to be out in June. And they wound up delaying it till September, I think, or October even, which is probably fine from their point of view. And all the companies closed, they they were working remotely. So all those comics that came out, I guess it's a kind of a testament to professionalism because, you know, creators probably always worked at home, but without like a, an editor calling you all the time from, you know, Marvel or DC to keep you on track. This was a case where I think DC is still working remotely. I think most of them are. You know? Marvel was, I know, yeah. during that you know, time. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a, an interesting time. I mean, you, you'd think that being home, you know, you get more work done or whatever, but we're all used to being home. Yeah. So I think, you know, I was talking to Mitch about that. There, there's a, Mitch Halleck, there's a, a lot of uh, feeling like, well, hey, if I'm gone, I'm working at home and I can't go out to restaurants or can't do what I, you know, the conventions or whatever, what do you do for a, a change of pace? So, I mean, we were all working on house projects. <laughs> <laughs> you know, last yeah. summer I dug up uh, like trenches and, and uh, you know fixed drainage issues that I had and you know that type of thing. So it was like good hard work. Um, but uh, I, I kept busy you know, doing commissions and things. So. Awesome. So you got commissions. You had the North Mythology thing. Yep. Uh, any projects you're working on now? Um, nothing. Well, I'm working on uh, some pages for uh, Section Zero. 1959, which was a Kickstarter that Carl Kiesel and Tom awesome. Grummet did a while back. So um, I, I just finished an eight-page eight story, and he's asking me to do another one, which I might if I if I can work out the schedule. But uh, otherwise, I'm doing covers. I've got a bunch of variant covers coming out. Awesome. Some of them were delayed, some were not. I did a, a variant for the Shield, the Archie thing that Rob Liefeld just recently left. Huh. Um, but I had a variant for the first issue. Um, I did a variant for Geiger number five. Awesome. That I think is solicited now, but they didn't solicit the image for some reason. I don't know why. But um, uh, what else did I do? I did a cover for Black Hammer uh, collection. That's supposed to be a hardcover that I guess collects the spotlight issues or the separate, you know, the standalones. I think there's two volumes of that, and mine is the second volume hardcover. But that's you know. 
people call me for stuff like that. I did a Batman 89 alternate or variant, which I guess makes sense because the book was originally going to be digital only, and now they're doing it as a print. Oh, I didn't know that. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, no, I think someone t someone mentioned that they changed that plan. It was originally supposed to. And I was like, how does a variant work on a digital yeah, book? Yeah, true. You know, you just pull it off of Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, Jerry posted it on Twitter. <laughs> I've got a variant. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it's kind of fun. You know? Awesome. And uh, you did a variant for that, uh, or I think you did the cover for one of those Dark Knight Metal times, right? The Superboy? Well, I did this. I did, a, like, a chunk of story for that. That's right, yeah. 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 And that was fun. You know, it was kind of like a character that I had some history with. I mean, I, I worked with Jeff Johns on some of the awesome um, various, I think he was tied into the, I want to say, was it a, a Sinestro War or something? Yeah. Or, um, and also Blackest Night, you know, so yeah. that character popped up and I did the, the appearances in those. Cool. So Awesome. I guess he's my character. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, and then on TV, Loki uh, came out this week. Did they were able to catch the first episode? I did. I, I, I watched it with my daughter, Rachel, and uh, I was impressed. I mean, it was funny because I've liked the Marvel shows a lot. Um, I've really been liking, I mean, I thought Loki was an interesting story. It's hard to tell where they're going with it, but I'm sure it'll be good. Oh, yeah. But um, I, I've been really liking the Superman and Lois show. On the, Same. Yeah. It's really well done. It's got a, I mean, I think it's got the vibe that we went for, which was to kind of base it, you know, kind of, it's not real, but you try to give it more of a real yeah. grounding. And um, yeah, no, I think the, the family aspect and then the subplots and tying it all to Smallville has, has, has been really interesting. It, it's been nice to see Tyler Hecklin really get into that role more and yeah. see a show focused with yeah, him. Yeah. He really does a good job with both Clark and Superman. Yeah. And I wasn't, I mean, like, visually, I'm not, I wasn't uh, a fan of either Clark or, or Lois. <laughs> I mean, I just thought that they didn't, they didn't have the same, you know, aspect that I expected. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. the, the movies have prepared you for and all that. So I was a little bit disappointed, but, I mean, they won me over as far as the story. Yeah. So, yeah. You know. the, the, they've really done, it doesn't feel like a CW show, even though it is on the no. CW. No, and it's not a, it's not like the DC Universe show either, no. because it's not super dark. Yeah. I mean, it's dark, but it's not, you know, really like Titans or, or those shows. Were, um, so I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, some of those shows back. Like, I guess Doom Patrol comes back at some point. Yeah. Yeah. And season I think Titans three. Season 3 is also on there. Yeah. Yeah. The one I'm kind of looking forward to most, which I guess we have to wait till August, is Stargirl Season 2. I still need that. I haven't watched it yet, but I oh, hear nothing but good things. Yeah, yeah, no, that's really good. And uh, I guess season, well, the first season, it kind of vibes on uh, the Infinity Inc. after I left. Mm -hmm. I mean, after Mike Macklin and I left, yeah. it was that next generation with the... Uh, when, when McFarlane was doing it where they had it, added a bunch of different characters but um, from what I understand the second season introduces Jade and maybe Obsidian so cool. yeah and, and uh, you know um, it, it Jeff Jeff did a good job but like I said the first season he I mean I talked to him about it too because I, I, he had said that he moved his family to Atlanta because he wanted to show run it because he had had that experience of you know you you can be a producer on something, but then once it's off at production in Canada or wherever, you lose control of the day to day, and that's sometimes where like the bad or the problematic stuff yeah. happens. Yeah. I mean, it's like you know, not with the actors, but it's just that the story can get off uh, off track. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then being you know, a huge part of the Shazam comics, we've gotten promos, teasers for Black Adam, and even yeah, yeah. for Shazam too. Yeah. What are your thoughts seeing those projects come along? Um. I think Black Adam was, you know, was ready to go before the shutdown. They had a script that was locked. They hadn't hired a director. They started, you know, looking at casting and stuff. So it's interesting. I mean, I, I'm excited for that because I kind of feel like it's going to vibe on the JSA storyline that Jeff yeah. Johns had done. And uh, and Black Adam, I feel, you know, it's hard not to, even though I didn't create the character, that's one of the few elements from the Power Shazam that, I think they they actually did keep and you know um, continue as far as the the concept that I did, which was basically in this in the, the series. It's like Shazam comes about because Black Adam kills the parents, but it's not Black Adam. He at a certain point it, I, I decided to try to have him. Um, how do you deal with a character who 
is being accepted in you know the real world or a world of Captain Marvel. Billy has the, this is the guy who killed his parents, but yet he's suddenly becoming you know he's the head of his own country or he's you know he's becoming more legitimate. Yeah. So I decided to do kind of what they did with Doctor Doom and maybe Namor and Marvel yeah. and, and have him become that kind of diplomatic character but also he had to set this aside so he has to tell you know they have to determine you know reincarnation or is this the human host who killed his parents mm -hmm. so it's still murky to me and it was meant to be murky but yeah. you know imagine having to deal with somebody who did something terrible to you and having everybody say oh this guy's a hero he's a dark hero or something yeah i just felt like that was like an important thing and they they, they totally ran with that with that jsa series mm -hmm. and um, you know that's kind of where i think that character you know developed um, enough to be a movie yeah you know? absolutely absolutely and uh do you what do you think about the new shazam costume because it looks you know kind of i think it's fine awesome. i'm not the problem I have is I understand that they have to make these things with some kind of high-tech, uh, you know, they got the ribbing and the texture and everything. It's kind of like almost expected. Yeah. Like if somebody just did the nylon or the, <laughs> you know, the tights or whatever, it would be like, a, oh, you know, it's too old school or something. <laughs> Um, but I think it's weird in a way that I still think that character would be more fun. They could still do that same thing and do the armbands and the boots. You know what I mean? Yeah. The thing I liked about the character was he had that over-the-shoulder cape. It was yeah. more of a matador yeah. thing or whatever. Um, it was distinctive and it didn't make him look like Superman. Agreed. You know? Um, but yeah, I mean, the costumes at least are colorful now. Yeah. You know, it was, yeah. that was one thing I was thinking about. I rewatched the X Men from 19, or from 2000, and I was like, they were making fun. Everybody's wearing the black leather and stuff, and they made they even made a joke. You know, you, would you rather wear yellow or something? Yes. Yeah. And uh, it's just funny that that's something that people wouldn't embrace. You know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, 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 as a comic fan, you'd rather see a character look kind of like the character. You know. Yeah. What else can they do? They could at least do that. They're not going to follow the storylines. They're going to reinvent it because, you know, the movie's going to have different uh, needs than a comic or whatever. But uh, So we're getting there, at least. Uh, I yeah. Think in that. I would hope that, like, when Marvel reintroduces the Fantastic Four or, you know, any of those other characters that hadn't been around for a little bit, that they'll, you know, embrace the, the actual True. origins. You know? Yeah. Because that's what made them distinct. Exactly. Otherwise, they're just guys in a black suit, or they're, you know what I mean? It, yeah, you want that. You yeah. know, and Marvel's been doing a pretty good job with that. Yeah. So I'm yeah, definitely yeah. looking forward to seeing. You know, well, I, I mean, that's a, and the other thing that's funny is if you watch the boys, I mean, <laughs> the boys is like a take on those characters. You yeah. Know, it's Justice League. It's whatever. You know, it's the same with Jupiter's Legacy. It literally, was a, a take on Superman and Captain Marvel in a similar way. You know. Um, so you really got to embrace the costumes because without the costumes, the concept is a concept. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you if you if you go in, you got to go all in. I think. Agree. You yeah. Know? Same with uh, secret identities. It becomes kind of like a, well, why would you do a secret identity? Well, I could. Plenty of writers have written stories about that. You know, you do a, you know, some save somebody, and they know who you are. You're gonna get sued. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> you could be, you could save 20 people, but maybe a bump one guy, and he's got a torn ligament in his in his leg, and he's, you know, suffering forever with that. You know, I mean, there's always a downside to that. So I think without some kind of like police have some immunity because the, you know, city or town or whatever has to take the brunt of any lawsuits. But uh, yeah, I mean, a superhero doesn't have that. That's why. And yeah, that makes you a vigilante, but. That's part of the, I think, the appeal. Absolutely. You know? Assault of the Lord. It's always been like that, you know. So. And after wearing masks for a year. I know. It's relatable. <laughs> you get a sense of how, I mean, it's also funny because you see people in a store, and especially early on, you go, you do one of those, Yeah. you know, because it's like, when you're just seeing the eyes, you see people's eyes, and it's like, oh, well, this person's that? got a nice eye. Yeah. And then, you know, the mask comes down, it's like, oh, wait, I know you. And <laughs> Uh, yeah, no. So it's I, I I like that aspect. I do think the uh, the idea of, of the secret identity still still seems valid. Definitely, know? yeah. 
Um, and then you've mentioned you do how you've been doing commissions. Uh, if someone was to be interested in a commission, uh, what's the best way to uh, reach you for that? I try to make it really hard. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I get too many, I get more requests than I physically can or want to do. Gotcha. Um, so I wind up, I, I do, if, if people contact me on Twitter, I can go through and, you know, as long as I can direct message them, I'll give them an email to yeah. contact me. But the problem with doing this stuff is I don't have like an agent doing it because gotcha. I just never like that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I could hire or have somebody do it and they could book 200 things. I don't want to do that. I have friends who do that and it just like, I don't want to be doing that. You know, I'm still trying to do comic stuff. I mean, uh, over the last year, I wasn't as productive with my own thing as I wanted to be, but I got eight pages pencil and ink for the next Proton chapter. Cool. And uh, I'm hoping to get like four more pages done and, you know, fingers crossed to get the thing printed by uh, Terrificon. Awesome, awesome. Um, but that's my goal. And it's just, it's funny that it should come down to, you know, a deadline in a sense because Terrificon's in virtually what uh, like a month and a two month weeks and, yeah, a week. month and a half or <laughs> yeah. something yeah so uh, but maybe it happens maybe it doesn't but I'm, gonna, uh, I, I'm at least happy to have those eight pages done and feeling like the story is progressing awesome <clears throat> awesome um, Jerry once, as always thank you so much for your time I really appreciate it and uh, look forward to Terrificon yep. <laughs> always <laughs>